Hey, what's up guys? Mike for Tactical Hive here. Just gonna kind of go over some basic gear overview, down and dirty of some of the little nuances and some of the unique stuff that Marsoc runs here. And you might be able to, you know, pick out some little bits and compare and contrast and see what works best for you with, with your setup, you know? So this is pretty uh, standard play carrier stuff. Nothing really fancy. Ronin gun belt is pretty typical as well. Again, nothing uh, super fancy or anything. We like to stay as uh, streamlined as possible. You might notice I have some remnants of comm gear like all over me. I used to be a comm guy in the teams. That was like my collateral duty. I used to carry like three radios on me, like a 117, a 152 Alpha, and like a you know, M-Biter and something. So kind of a pain in the ass. Glad I'm not doing that anymore. But so a plate carrier, runner mags here. We always run a, you know, a center line ish tourniquet. We got two tourniquets in the shoulder typically on a, a mission set here. Depending also, we'll carry some other stuff too. We'll carry like some grenades, some smoke, some flashbangs, things like that. Depending, mission, different missions dictate different loadouts, uh, nothing special. You might notice I got these sweet tricolors on. Those are kind of old school now, uh, done away with in the teams uh, across uh, all of SOCOM actually. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the Raider community was the last last of the tricolors here. I think NSW was second to last, and that's typical. Marine Corps is usually last and everything, so that checks out. And then we, you know, obviously all of SOCOM went to the standard multicam, super cool guy, stuff like that here, but nothing fits like some dry fires, I'll tell you that for free. Here you'll see like a typical bland ops core here. It's kind of stripped down from everything I used to run on it. I run these peltors like this now because it's easier just for like typical range days, stuff like that. Usually you'll see the little flippy doodles on them. You know, just a little nods mount. I like a little bit extra red light here. So I run dual because of, you know, calm guy, I gotta see different stuff. That's pretty much that. You'll notice on the back plate, I run pry uh, pouch, like pl plate attachment there. It just kind of zips on and uh, Velcros on to the back. And uh, with that weird looking tubey flat thingy is on the back, the, the tan custom tan uh, tape job is, uh, it's actually fire hose. That's more like for a typical like CQB setup. Fire hose is just makes it really easy to carry tools. You know, you got like your, your uh, sledge and hooli type things, stuff like that. That makes it a little bit easier because a lot of people like to put that type of uh, stuff through uh, the top uh, carrying handle of the plate carrier. Problem with that is it's usually not very secure, flops all over the place. You have to secure it by an alternate means. And it'll, uh, depending on the height of your plate carrier, it'll bang your ass up in a plane or especially in a truck, you know, not much room. Uh, military trucks have a tendency to be like a, a freaking monster jam monster truck, you know, on the outside and a smaller than a Toyota Corolla on the inside. So, you know, keep everything tight and streamlined is always best, you know, and of course you have the lanyard that we typically will make out of some kind of sling like this. And you can even put like a single point attachment on there and strap that in so you have a quick pull, little things like that. All right, so something uh, that's unique to uh, the Raiders that I haven't seen in any other uh, SOCOM entity, but I'm sure, don't trust me, I know I'll get corrected. I'm sure there's some tier one guy out there on the keyboard that's gonna tell me otherwise, but everyone runs a knife, right? One thing that I like is this knife right here that we get issued. It's a really badass Benchmade knife. Sock P is uh, the origin of it, right? Greg Thompson started Sock P, which is the uh, Special Ops Combatives program which uh, Marsoc follows and uh, trains to. It's pretty effective. You'll notice that just like my tourniquet and my primary mags, everything, try and keep it center line, right? Typically I'll have like a, a calm push box, chingadera right here, whatever. So that's why it's kind of close to the tourniquet and everything. But anywhere behind your plates, anywhere center line, even some guys run it on their belts behind them, but as long as close center, you can get it to, with uh, both hands. It's really the idea. And you see, it's got this cool little loop here and it comes out and you're ready to, uh, you know, whoop it on if you need to. This is just hand-to-hand -hand combat basic stuff. We call it the sock P knife, but uh, I like to call it the joystick because it goes perfectly right behind the collarbone and you just take anyone for a ride. It's pretty much that there. That wraps up that with the whole uh, knifey knife. Now, uh, something else, you'll, if uh, you guys are really nitpicky and you kind of see it, you'll notice I run uh, my gear belt a little weird. But right here, this, we'll talk about the holster a little bit. Typical Glock 19 holster. 
you'll see it's got room for a, like an X300, like a little light or whatever on it. Quick thumb draw. You'll notice probably the most thing that's gonna drive everyone crazy is the fact that it's not like actually run through my belt. One, these belts are thick, it's a pain in the ass. So if you haven't done it, <laughs> trust me, it's not fun. But typically a lot of guys will do that regardless. The reason why I have it down here, I put it on these like industrial zip ties is because honestly the height adjustment, it's only it only goes so much and I don't like my pistol like up here. It's a little more awkward and doing transitions and I gotta like come up here and do that. It kind of like throws you off. It's a little bit easier to take it out here. Just meets my level, my like arms, my legs, you know, body types are different. So don't be afraid to think outside the box a little bit. That's just why I run mine a little bit unorthodox, you could say. And then uh, really the last thing is uh, these bad boys uh, flapping out of my pocket, like a undisciplined, nasty Marine. These are just some basic mechanics gloves, just tactical, you know, coyote tan, easy money, thin. They protect, they keep dexterity and all that stuff. But one thing that people get wrapped up around are gloves and that's insane. Uh, don't, don't get too, uh, weirded out about like which pair of gloves is which, uh, typically in the teams, like there's a different set of gloves for different tasks, different jobs, different things. I have like, uh, both ends of the spectrum here, you know, I'll have a heavy set of like leather reinforced gloves. You know, I can still manipulate stuff, but big things I'm talking like crew serves like Mark 19s or freaking 50 stuff like you know shit like that is what i'll run like a heavier glove especially at night because if you've ever shot a 50 uh man that thing gets hot like barrels get white hot you actually through your nods you actually see the rounds go through it it gets so hot sometimes so the last thing you want to do is uh lose your fingerprints on one of those so you know we'll do that if that's unique to that situation i'll always have a lighter set in my pocket if i you know whatever but this is a typical every day do it all type of glove set up. And then we also have uh, some other gloves that are a little bit like Gorilla Grip, really light uh, rubber, uh, really thin rubber coated elastic gloves. Those are great for things that require like high dexterity, things like that. One of my other collateral duties was like forensics and uh, SSE or uh, sensitive site exploitation type of things. We need to be a little bit more manipulative with different uh, tools that we use and things like that and touch screens and stuff. So all things to keep in mind. But bottom line is run something that makes you feel comfortable that you can still manipulate your weapon system effectively with and don't get all wrapped around the axle about different brands, this, that, and the other thing. Because the bottom line is you're gonna go through gloves and it doesn't matter how many years the damn thing lasts because you're just gonna, they're gonna get torn up one way or another. So keep it simple. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, my name is Mike, Tactical Hive. The just basic down and dirty, uh, just gear rundown, nothing too fancy. And that's pretty much it. Like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you wanna uh, see something else. We run a ton of setups. This is just scratching the surface of, you know, some typical gear that we run every day.